Hey what's up, my name is Matt Workman, and in this video we're going to be taking a look at how I created this metahuman suit using a combination of new AI workflows and tools, as well as some traditional workflow tools like Maya and ZBrush. So this is sort of a controversial topic, but I wanted to see in 2025, how are the 3D generation tools and are they good enough to use along with metahumans? So let's jump right into this. So this whole process started with me wanting to make a suit for the metahumans. So it started with me Googling uh, James Bond. This is obviously Daniel Craig here. And the real find and experiment for today is going to hit him 3D. And you can basically feed in a single image. And that is the 3D model that it generates, which is really impressive. Uh, really cool details on this suit and this 3D model of... A guy in a suit, doesn't really look like Daniel Craig in the end, is actually the background character for the intro. So when you look at the topology up close, it's obviously very heavy. It basically gets it to about a million verts. And this looks a lot like photogrammetry. However, um, to get this onto a metahuman, I basically used ChatGPT, and I told it to take this image and redraw it uh, with the actor in an A pose, like a video game character. And it did a great job of that. We then fed this back into Hidden 3D. This was my last of the free trial, but both of these were really compelling. Uh, and then we bring this into ZBrush. Okay, so here we are in ZBrush, and this is the raw 3D model from uh, Hidden 3D, which is rather impressive. I know the face um, isn't perfect, but we're really looking at the suit. And while this has projected some pretty nice textures onto it, um, I'm not going to be using those, but I am... Uh, especially impressed with just the overall shape of it looks really nice and there's wrinkles and details and the whole thing's really great but it is about a million polygons which is way way too much to use with a metahuman so um if you've ever worked with photogrammetry um this is a pretty similar process and it begins uh somewhere around here with geometry into modified topology and to start we're going to weld points i'm not going to do it to this one but i'm just saying this is what we do uh, we're going to weld points to bring it together and then we're going to go to z remesher and this is going to do our auto read topology um, after that we're going to get a mesh that looks something like this and i'll turn this one on uh, and you'll see that we have now about um 41, 000 uh, points of verts, right? So much less um, resolution there. And this is basically what we're going to be using for our final mesh out of, um, or we're using this as our final mesh, basically to rig to the metahuman. Uh, so after this, um, you'll see that this has the texture applied to it. So after you do the retopology, um, should you use a, you know, you generate a mesh where the texture is like really important on this one. It's not, it's pretty generic, but say you wanted to keep this, that's not going to happen for free. Uh, but ZBrush is the basically best program to do this type of stuff. Same thing with photogrammetry. You're going to want to go to UV master. It'll auto unwrap it, which uh, happened here. And then you're going to want to project the uh, texture from the high poly to the texture of the low poly, which ZBrush, if you look that up, it's pretty straightforward to do. So this is transferring from uh, the high poly uh, texture from Hidden 3D to the low poly one. So now I'm in Maya and I've imported that low poly retopology from ZBrush. And of course the suit doesn't actually perfectly fit on the metahuman. It's not like Marvelous Designer. It's just kind of randomly picked this A pose. However, it was close enough that now I can just use the move brush and the move tool. Um, you could do this in ZBrush too, if you wanted, or in Blender or in Unreal Engine too, actually. Um, but however you can get the mesh to fit onto one of the standard metahuman bodies, you just go ahead and kind of squish and rotate the verts around. And of course the more, uh, the closer the actual um, generated mesh is to the metahuman A pose, the better. We have some rough edges around the wrist and the neck, but uh, we're kind of just going past those. So next I'm in Substance Painter, and although we can project the texture from Hidden 3D, in this case it was so basic that I wanted to paint it from scratch. So I'm basically going ahead and dropping on some like basic linen textures and then painting masks uh, onto the suit uh, basically by hand, but it's really a pretty straightforward process. We made the shoes leather and then I do a little bit of a cleanup. So I basically made like four masks and applied a material, pretty basic. 
And this is our final suit here with a little bit of texture on there. Uh, not too bad. So that was the basic process of going from a photo to GPT to Hidden 3D to ZBrush and then to Substance Painter. And then we finally bring this back into Unreal Engine. And right now you're seeing some narrative motion mocap of the actor talking and the face is audio driven. I just recorded a voiceover and it generated the lip sync for me. And the suit looks honestly pretty good for very little work. Uh, at this point, you know, and, and or at any point in the beginning, we could have gone and cleaned up certain parts of it and then sharpened up some areas, added some 3D buttons. And it's really like we're working with photogrammetry, except we're just sourcing it off the internet and then using hidden 3D to actually make the photogrammetry. It's a pretty interesting process. Um, as far as turning, um, the static mesh version of the, um, of the outfit into an actual metahuman outfit, I have a course on that process, uh, if you'd like to see it in depth, but it basically looks like these, again, these are the narrative motion animations. If you want to use these for your work, go check out narrativemotion.com. But it basically looks like this. I've made a lot of outfits. Uh, this is not even, this is only some of them. Uh, but this is basically what came in. We have an outfit asset, a wardrobe item, and it's not very cleaned up. But you'll see here that this is the suit that uh, I finished in Maya. Uh, it's a little bit high poly uh, overall. I mean, you could retopo this manually. You could have retoppoed immediately onto the high poly in general. Um, but I wanted to show a workflow where you really didn't have to do much manual retopology. The, the most manual part of this is cutting out the head and the hands. That's... That's the most part, but most of the other stuff could basically be scripted and then I, I hand painted the texture, but you could finish the texture however you wanted. But the point is that uh, with this workflow, if you make this a metahuman outfit, you just bring it in as a static mesh. You don't even need to rig it in Maya or Blender. So again, here's our final suit and metahuman creator. It's an outfit asset. Uh, I'll show you in a second that it, it scales and does all that stuff correctly. Uh, we can for now play the body rum and see how it does. Um, there's a couple skinning things that just happen with outfit assets. There is a way of kind of smoothing this out and fixing this stuff, but like, yeah, I guess in the next stretch is an awful lot, but, um, with outfit assets, you're kind of mostly stuck with the skinning that they give you. Uh, you can make a little bit of tweaks that I've done to like the armpits and certain things like that. But overall, you kind of just like take the good with the bad, considering that you didn't have to rig it yourself. We just brought in a static mesh. It's it's quite good in most cases. But if you really care about rigging, you just go rig this yourself and skin it rather in, in Maya or Blender and kind of do the waiting yourself uh, for a specific body. Okay, so we have deleted the rig here and let's go mess with the body a little bit. So we can just basically use some of these presets. Uh, let's do Bruce's body. Give it a second and we'll let the outfit uh, mesh, right? So this is a much uh, wider person, much taller, but you know, our AI generated suit kind of just goes along for the ride. Pretty cool. Uh, we'll put on a more uh, feminine body, see how that goes. So with that head though, and you'll see that the suit is just shrink wrapping to it really well. So it's quite a powerful workflow. Um, I'll switch it to George here, Jorge, I'm not sure how we're pronouncing this one, but uh, it's quite a powerful workflow to be able to basically say, hey, I like that outfit that you saw online from a single photo, be able to generate uh, a, quite a compelling 3D model of it, uh, do some work to it, and then have it be a scalable, morphable, parametric metahuman outfit where you know, if we wanted to, we could make the, you know, this outfit like have you know changeable colors and changeable textures and whatnot. But being able to, again, just <laughs> take a photo and make a, a parametric 3D uh, outfit is quite a powerful workflow. And without even going in and like adding little 3D buttons and stuff like that, and I would consider this like a really quick suit, uh, this is certainly good enough for like all the background characters of like a wedding or something like that that need to be in suits where like you kind of, they're just out of focus and in the background. We're pretty good. We're not going to need too much more than this. Like the shoe, the shoes don't have shoelaces, but overall really, really good and compelling workflow. And, you know, I think any competent 3D artist could take this as a base and just, you know, delete out, delete out the bad part, sharpen it up, go re-sculpt it. If anything, it's just a really good base to start. And um, for everyone else, I think we're just shipping this into your, 
into your game, into your movie, especially for background characters. For hero characters that have like custom things hanging off of them and backpacks and whatnot, I think, you know, the old workflow works quite well, but this is certainly a great um, kind of like way to get started for even outfits like that, especially if you're using um, any sort of like AI for the concept part into the 3D. So that wraps it up for this video. Let me know what you think. Uh, I am definitely going to be continuing to test this workflow out. I'm going to do an outfit next that has like a really intricate texture and more hard surface stuff and just kind of keep testing um, image generation uh, into parts and building outfits out of it all to basically make uh, a metahuman and to make the metahumans, uh, make, the, make it an easier process for making metahuman clothing. That wraps it up and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.